everybody, welcome. It's Jill with Go English Coach. Um, I'm really excited today because it is our first live class. Um, so I'm going to do just a couple minutes of this class here for the Facebook group. Um, but for those of you on Facebook, um, I'm not going to do the full lesson here. Um, I'm going to be focusing on my students here in the live class. So remember, we did three English classes in April, and here we are in May. And the um, so I'm, I would love for you guys to join. Remember, you get uh, four live classes each week if you sign up at the gold level. If you sign up at the bronze level, you get um, four mini lessons each week. So you get a part of the lesson, um, but not the whole lesson. But you're still, you know, able to participate in our online community. So, all right. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. This is what we're doing today. So we are starting our first lesson. So lesson one of our intermediate grammar course. Intermediate grammar. Now. This is a good grammar. The level for this class is like a B1 or B2 level. So, so also you guys knowing what your level is for English is really important, okay? Um, and another, you know, kind of, um, I, I always recommend kind of knowing where you're at with things, right? Like my uh, recommendation is to take some sort of an online test. There are lots of online tests. And so, you know, doing that as a starting point really helps you to know like, okay, I'm a level B1 or B2. Um, because if you're enrolled in a class that's too difficult, it's not going to be fun and, and learning is going to be difficult and strenuous and stressful. Um, so that is always my recommendation. Okay, so knowing where you're at. So finding an online free English assessment is, is totally possible and, and really, really helpful. So intermediate grammar, we are doing a B1, let's call this B1, B2. So the, um, the, uh, the common European framework reference is the CEFR, that's the B1, B2. Um, we're going to look today on present tense and present progressive. Some of the other topics, you guys, that we will learn in intermediate grammar one. So we will, this is lesson one of eight. So I will do eight lessons in intermediate grammar one this month. Okay. That is what is happening here. Checking in on your questions here. Hi, guys. Um, okay. If you don't have any questions about the class, let's go ahead and get started, okay? Um, great. So what we're going to look at today, uh, I'm going to give a couple more minutes, you guys, to the, the Facebook learners, um, and then I'm going to shut the camera off and focus on the people who are in the class here. So um, great. So we have, uh, I want to compare, and we did a recent lesson on this. So. Hopefully you saw that lesson, and if you didn't, you can go back on the website and look in the class archives, and you can find another lesson like this. So let's get started. So let's look at, okay, simple, present. This one is really easy, right? Um, and so, and then also present, progressive, okay, progressive. So those are two different present tenses that we use very often in English, okay? So when do we use those? Simple present versus present progressive. Um, in my opinion, we use um, present progressive more than simple present. So the question is when or when do we use those? All right, so let's make a list. If you guys have some answers to those questions, when do we use the simple present. So give me some scenarios. Okay, one is um, to talk about things that happen or occur, happen or occur regularly. Regular, reg, oh my gosh, okay, regular. 
blur, leave. So, or with frequency, okay? Regularly or often or every day, okay? So, let's get a couple of examples with that. A couple of examples. So, here are some examples. Let's make a couple sentences here. So, remember, we always say things with, in English, we do subject, verb, object, right? That's always the order for our sentences in English, okay? Um, so, some examples. Um, I drive to school, uh, let's do this every day, okay? Now, you're seeing just by this word, you guys, that it is something that happens regularly, okay? Regularly. Um, you drive to school on Fridays, okay? So here's another way of describing or giving more information, okay? So we've got one subject here. Now let's do he. Of course we know that we change this in the third person, so we add the S. He drives, she drives, it drives, okay? Kind of a silly sentence if we say it drives, but it can happen. Um, he drives to work, um, at night. Okay. So that is describing something that happens often or regularly. Okay. So let's look here. Like I like to put the singular, singular stuff here. And then let's do the plural ones here. We drive. So no S, even though this, this is the plural side. Okay. We have, we drive um, to the store, okay? Um, let's say on Sundays, so just we can get more practice using some of those, we drive to the store on Sundays, okay? Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. How are we doing over here? Great, okay, now, Another plural one, so the plural of he, she, it, we're gonna say they, okay, they drive. All right, so it's very easy to form the present tense. Um, so we can just add more information here. If you guys can write some of these sentences down so that you can practice them because a couple of things that get tricky or difficult with the present tense are the negatives, the contractions, and um, qu uh, question creation. So making questions in the present tense um, using that do auxiliary, okay? So, so I think the forming of this is very easy. Most people do not have a problem with the forming of the present tense. Um, the, the problems come in, like I said, with question formation and negatives, okay? And also knowing when to use present progressive versus the simple present, okay? So let's focus on this for today. We're gonna focus, um, we're gonna talk a lot about this one, um, the simple present, and then we'll work in some of this in the whole hour class that we have here, okay? So <clears throat> let's go ahead and look at how we form the negatives, okay? So we're using this verb to drive, to drive, okay? We can practice with a couple of different things here. Um, all right, so I am gonna cancel out that, okay, perfect. Okay, all right, you guys, let's continue here. Um, Great. Okay, my light just fell over. There we go. Okay, now let's look at the negatives. Simple present, and we're gonna look at negatives, okay? And this is really good to practice too, because like I said, lots of people get stuck on these and end up making mistakes, okay? So the negative statements, so um, 
I, we had I drive, and we're gonna, we're gonna use the negative over here. So we're gonna do positive and then negative, okay? I drive, I do not drive, okay? So we're gonna add in this do auxiliary and the negative aspect of that, okay? So that's why I say it's really important to kind of practice this. Now, uh, you drive, you drive goes to the same thing, you do not drive, okay? Let's do she, remember there's always three in this category here, she, he, it, we've got drives is the positive, and when we switch that to negative, she does not drive, okay? She does not drive. All right, let's continue with the plural, and then we'll look at combining these, you guys, and making the plural or the um, contraction, which is a really important thing. Um, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, if you apply the rules from a lot of other languages, you know, you, I hear students say, like, she no drive, okay, um, or she not drive, and they forget this part, and it's really important. Um, if you forget this auxiliary verb, it really changes um, your fluency and the, the your comprehensibility. And when I say comprehensibility, that means the ability for somebody else who's listening to you to understand what you are saying, okay? We always want people to understand what you're saying. That is the number one goal in learning English, right? We want to be able to communicate. Great, okay, so we've got all the singular ones here. We'll do a little separation because these are the plurals. We drive, just like those other ones, you guys, we do not drive. We do not drive, okay? And finally, they drive goes to simply they do not drive. It's getting a little tricky to write down at the bottom of the board like that. Okay, so they drive goes to they do not drive. So really, this is this one's kind of like the, the lone man out, <laughs> the one that you kind of have to look out for. Um, you know, and in place of she, it could be like you know, uh, the bus driver doesn't drive, okay? You, you know, so you can take this out and put in another third person singular um, subject there. So this is the subject, right? Great, okay. I hope these are very easy for you guys. Um, let's now look at the contractions and the pronunciation of those contractions, okay? So do not goes to, we're gonna combine these, the vowel sound changes and we say don't, don't, okay? You don't drive, you don't drive, okay? Um, she doesn't, doesn't. So we're contracting it, we're combining, so two steps happen. The vowel sounds do change and that's what you need to pay attention to. So let's look at, and you know, this is something that I like to focus on in um, the pronunciation and fluency class, but I like to integrate grammar and fluency because they go hand in hand. And when you're learning the grammar and it's really in your mind and it's relevant, it makes sense to um, have the conversation also about the pronunciation. So don't, don't. This one is a little bit easier. Don't, this is the O, long O. Okay, so making sure O, no, show, low, O. Okay, so your mouth is really open or really round. Okay, uh, row, O. Okay, don't, don't. Okay, another thing that happens with a final T like that is many times we don't fully say the T sound. Okay, so we say don't, don't. I don't drive. She doesn't, well, it doesn't. You don't, don't drive, okay, don't drive. So you could come up with, you know, don't, 
walk, um, don't listen, and just practice the pronunciation of those. Um, don't um, work, don't eat, don't eat, don't eat. So, so listen to how those go. Don't eat. I'm not saying don't eat. I'm saying don't eat, don't eat. Don't walk, don't walk. Okay, so the T many times here is um, not fully released is what they say. It's an unreleased T, so you can kind of have this little sound like that, letting you know that we don't say, don't, don't, don't listen. Don't listen to that. <laughs> that's, that's an imperative, so don't worry about that yet. Don't worry, there we go, don't worry. That's a good one, okay. Now, remember, we're saying this in the negative present tense. So, I don't walk. You don't listen. They don't work. Um, she, well, then we, when we get to she, we're going to say doesn't. Um, we don't worry. We don't worry. Okay. Um, great. So, and then back to this one, the pronunciation for this doesn't. It's not do. It's not do. It's duh. Uh. So. When I write things like this, you guys, with the lines that are slanted, it means the pronunciation or how it sounds. So what we're going to make here is duh. That's the first sound here. The next is uh, uh. This is, I always say it sounds like when you get punched in the stomach. Uh, duh, doesn't, doesn't, okay? This is the pronunciation of this word. And again, we're not going to fully release that T. Doesn't. So I want you guys to write this down and practice it. Okay? Write it down and practice it. Don't and doesn't. Okay. Doesn't. So making sure that you are pronouncing those words correctly will save a lot of issues or problems with that. Okay? Um, great. Okay, so we've got the simple present, very easy. We've got the negative simple present, also pretty easy, but you know, often we need to practice, okay? Let's look at how do we create the questions, the questions in the simple present, okay? Simple present questions. Okay, and hopefully, you know, if you guys have seen a lesson, I did, like I said, I did this lesson, oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago as a, as a sample lesson. Um, but, you know, we're able to go a little deeper here. So hopefully this is helpful for you guys. And let's just make sure my thing is all set. There we go. Good. Okay. Okay, let's look at the questions part of it, you guys. Question formation. Okay, questions. How do we make a question in the present tense? So let's look at, let's start with I. Uh, actually, let's start with you. Um, so you um, work on Saturday, okay? This is a simple present tense in the, in the positive. So you work on, so this is getting, too much. There we go. Please just work by. There we go. How about that? Okay. So you work on Saturday. Let's make a question out of this. Now, here's the formula. Okay. You've got do you work on Saturday? Question mark. So we're at, we're using this do again. Okay. We're using it in the question part of this. Do you work on Saturday? Do you work on Christmas? <laughs> do you work? Do you work? Okay. Um, so does, and then let's say she works on Friday. So we've got the S there. And let's change that to a question. Does she work? Okay, dot, 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 we can add more information in there. Does she work, okay? Now, um, for a moment I wanna chat about the 
pronunciation of do and does, because again, we are saying does, okay, does. And then this is still ooh. Ooh, or it's going to be like this. Do, okay, that's the pronunciation of that. And there, you know, I'm putting a capital D here, but that's not actually how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this. Okay, this is the International Phonetic Alphabet, and I use this a lot in, in both the pronunciation and fluency classes and the grammar classes. So, so learning that, you know, for sure, you know, attend the pronunciation and fluency classes because those are really important. Um, and I really do use the IPA um, as much as possible because it really helps us to distinguish letters from sounds. We've talked about this before with English is not phonetic, okay? Um, great, okay, so let's see. We've got this, we've got the present, we moved it to a question. Um, let's, um, we can also ask, uh, these questions could be in the negative. Don't you work on Saturday? Don't you work on Saturday? That's another question. It's actually very similar to this. There's not much difference in terms of usage or meaning. If I say, do you work on Saturday? Or don't you work on Saturday? This one is like a little bit more confusing. Like maybe I thought you told me you work on Saturday and now you're telling me you're going to a party. And so I would say, don't you work on Saturday? Okay. Or do you work on Saturday? It's also very similar. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense that um, don't you work and do you work are kind of asking the same question, okay? There's a little bit more implied here with like, kind of like, I'm confused. You told me something and now you're telling me something different, okay? Um, do you work on Saturday? Don't you work on Saturday? Let's change this one to negative. Doesn't she work? Doesn't she work? Or does she work? Again, those are very similar questions, just using a positive or a negative. Um, so hopefully that is clear to everybody. So those are the questions for the positive and the negative formation for the simple present tense. So um, what I would like to do is make available to you guys some practice sentences um, and we can do that in our next lesson. Um, let me show you, let's see, a couple more things about the questions. Um, there are, um, we have a couple other, other kinds of questions. So these are, well, let's talk about the answers. So these are what we call yes, no questions, okay? Yes, no because the answer to these questions is either yes or no. So let's make some answers here that are really going to, um, so you can answer simply yes. Do you work on Saturday? Yes or no, okay? If you want a more complete answer, you can do that. You can say yes, I do or no, I don't, okay? There's your answer, yes I do, or no, I don't, okay? And then remember to practice this pronunciation. We're gonna say don't, okay, with this, with this T a little less clear. It's kind of dropped. Okay, let's look at the answers for this third person. Does she work? Does she work, okay? We're gonna say in the positive, yes. You can simply just say yes, okay? Yes, she does, or no, she doesn't. Okay, good, good. Don't, and then here we got doesn't. Always practicing doesn't, doesn't. Okay, that's a hard one because there's, you know, three um, consonant sounds close together. So it can be a little tricky. Um, okay, here's a you and I one. Don't you work on Saturday? Very clear, yes, I do. 
or no, I don't. Okay, and the one thing I want to see here is, you know, or I want to show you here is that we go from using you to I. So the subject does change. Obviously, if you're asking somebody a question, their answer is about themselves and not I, right? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So doesn't she work? Again, we're going to use this. Yes, she does. And or yes, she does or no. She doesn't. Okay. Okay. No, she doesn't. Okay. Okay. So these are the yes, no questions. Um, we also have one other kind of question that I would like to share with you guys today. Um, and that is the WH question. So when you're asking for a little more information, okay, so let's, let's, let's see, let's erase this, erasing all of this. And let's look at WH questions, okay? Um, great. So let's do WH questions. Okay, and then after this part, we're going to move on to the next part, which is where we look at the present progressive tense, okay? And, we'll, and then we'll spend some time comparing those either today, if we have time, or on Thursdays, in Thursday's class, okay? Um, again, you guys, this is the book I'm using. Um, I, usually for grammar, I'm using this focus on grammar three. I definitely recommend my students buying the books. I think it's really helpful because then you can practice, and there's so many good um, practices in here, okay? And hopefully... We'll have a bit of time here to look at some of those and we can work on those together. All right, so WH questions for the simple present, we are going to use, so we've got, here's the general, the formula. We're gonna have WH word, so where, when, um, who, Okay, what are the other ones? Who, what, when, where? Um, great. And then you're gonna have do, and then the subject. So this is how I like to write these things like this. Uh, this is your formula. So WH word plus do plus subject, and then you've got the base verb. Base verb, okay? So we've got four parts to creating sentences like this. Um, let's get going here. I just check in my book to make sure I'm telling you guys all of the things that I wanna make sure um, to tell you. So, um, okay, let's choose a different word because we were using drive before. Let's see, what could we use? Um, let's say, um, Let's say, let's see, I was trying to think of, oh, let's just use eat. I mean, it's something that we all do, right? So let's create a sentence with the subject. So I, you, dot, 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 right? Okay. So I, oh no, excuse me. Let's do the where. So where, let's use where. Where, um, where do I eat? breakfast. Kind of a silly question, but we're using the where, the WH word, the do auxiliary, the subject, your base verb, and then the rest of the information. Okay, where do I eat breakfast? Well, let's see, well, how about this? When do you eat breakfast? Okay, these are all, again, you guys paying attention to um, this, like, when you would use these, this form, okay? So this is, you know, you're asking where, where do I eat breakfast? That's something that you do every day, or regularly, right? So then we kind of know that that's, that's simple present tense, okay? Where do I eat breakfast? We'll answer these in just a second here, but I want to focus on 
how we form these WH questions, okay? Um, let's do one in the third person. So who does, um, let's see, who does, we need, we need this here. She eat breakfast with, okay? We had to add that extra word here because otherwise the sentence doesn't make sense. Um, who, what, where, when, how about this? What do you eat for breakfast? Okay. So here's a couple really great questions that we can practice with. Um, where do I eat breakfast? Let's look at, so we've got this, this formula, you guys, with the WH, the do, the subject, and then the base verb, eat. And then we've got this additional information in some of these, right? So, um, great. So let's look at some of the answers. So where, of course we know that this is asking about a place. You guys all should know this, right? If you're at this level, you already know this, and this is just a nice review for you, okay? So where do I eat breakfast? The answer will be I eat breakfast. This is the very longer, you know, the very long answer. I eat breakfast at home every day, right? You could also say something like I eat breakfast at the cafe. I eat breakfast um, in my car on the way to work. <laughs> okay. You could do all of those lovely things to get more and more answers. Um, when do you eat breakfast? This is a great question and very um, clearly a simple present tense question. Okay. When do you eat breakfast? When do you eat breakfast? So I eat breakfast. Let's come up with something here at when. Okay. So we need a time, right? This is a date or time. So I eat breakfast at 6 a.m. Okay. I eat breakfast at 6 a.m. Got to make sure I'm on the camera there. Who does she eat breakfast with? So now we're asking for a person. There's somebody that a person is who. That's the answer to this question is who. We're going to say, um, who does she eat breakfast with? She eats. So we're going back to that. So here you guys remember when you've got the do, this is another thing that you should pay attention to. Okay. When you've got the, the do auxiliary in the third person, we make this does and then eat. So it's not does eats, right? Like it is in the, in the, um, in the present tense here, this part holds the, um, the conjugation for you. So you don't conjugate twice. You don't change the verb twice. Okay. She eats. Okay. The question is who she eats breakfast with her friends. Okay. She eats breakfast with her friends. Okay. Okay, another really great question that you can kind of use, you know, with friends or, you know, just in conversation for practice. What do you eat for breakfast? So it's a, you're going to add, you know, what is a, very, a lot more general. So we're going to be answering the kind of breakfast that we have. So I eat, um, let's see, I eat cereal. For breakfast. I eat cereal for breakfast. Okay, well, what if you would like to answer with a negative? If I say, I don't eat breakfast, okay, I can say that also. So let's put that down here. Hopefully, because I don't eat breakfast. Okay, so you can say that too. I don't eat breakfast. When do you eat breakfast? You could also say, I don't eat breakfast. Okay, when? I don't eat breakfast, okay? Okay, so now you guys, we have covered simple present tense, the negative simple present tense, 
yes, no questions in the simple present tense, and also the WH questions in the simple present tense. So we cover four aspects of the simple present tense, okay? Just wanting you guys to see the, all of the things that we're covering in this lesson, okay? Um, we've got about 15 minutes left in this class, so let's do just a general introduction to the present progressive, okay? So present, I'm gonna change this all out. Present progressive tense is similar, it is similar to the simple present, but we use it at different times, okay? At different times. So in general, you know, if you look at, oh gosh, look at that, how annoying is that? Okay. <laughs> simple present tense we use when we're talking about something that is happening in this moment or right now. I am standing, you are listening, I am holding a marker, I am teaching, I am wearing a black shirt, okay? Um, so, so let's look at present progressive and how we form this, okay? The present progressive. So we've got, here's our formula. We've got a subject. I'm just abbreviating that. We've got the form of to be, okay? Now we've got the base verb, okay? With, and we add onto this, I-N-G. So there's kind of four main parts, okay? All right, great. So let's practice a couple of these and then we'll look at the fuller, you know, the negatives and the questions um, in our class on Thursday. Okay, so um, here are our subjects. So I, you, he, again, he, she, it, and then we and they. Okay, those are in general the, the pronouns, the subjects, okay? Um, so for I, we're gonna use am, I am, you are, he, she, it, you got it, you guys, is, we are, and they are. Okay, that's just the simple present tense of those, uh, the verb to be, okay, to be, okay? So good job. Now let's add another verb. I am teach, and then we're gonna add the ing, okay? You are learning. Let's practice a couple here. Um, it is raining, okay? That's a verb to rain. We are wondering. Hopefully we get some new words here. They are, um, they are, I'm trying to think of a really good, typing, how about that? Typing. Okay, so a couple of things we're gonna look at here. These are, I am teaching, and then you can add more over here, English, okay? Now, you are learning English, it is raining today, we are wondering about that, okay? These are just some, they are typing, their papers, okay? Maybe somebody is in college and they have to practice writing an essay of some sort. Um, great, okay, so these are the present tense, the pos or the affirmative, so the positives, okay? Um, now, before we move on to looking at the negatives, I want to talk to you about a really important part of this um, tense, which is, or that, are these contractions, the contractions. So, and the contractions, because what happens here, right? If you've got, I am, we say I'm, okay, I'm. Let's put these closer together so I can squeeze this in here. So if I say I'm, so you can say I am teaching English, but what you're going to hear most American English people say is, I'm. So we're going to cover this up and we're going to practice this I'm. Okay, what happens is 
this is what I hear. I was just in another country where their native language is not English very recently. And I heard this a lot. I heard I teaching English. I teach you English. And the reason that people do that is because you don't, they don't hear I'm because we tend to, you know, native speakers tend to kind of, um, it's a very small sound, but it's very critical to the correct pronunciation. Okay. So really paying attention to this and like the pronunciation for this word, I'm, I'm okay. Um, I'm teaching English. Again, when I use those lines, that's the pronunciation of it. Okay, I'm teaching English. Let's look at the one here. So let's do your. Uh, let's move this over so we have a little more space and then I can squeeze it in there. You are or your. Your. Okay, so it sounds like your. Okay. You're learning English. You're learning English. So practice feeling comfortable with making those contractions. Now, it is okay if you do not want to use the contractions. It's, it's totally fine, but it does impact your intonation or your rhythm when you're speaking English, okay? And again, you're going to hear people, I mean, I would say, you know, 99% of the time when you're listening to English, maybe you're watching a show or maybe you're watching the news or listening to a podcast, all really good ideas. You're gonna hear, hear what I just said, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear um, it pronounced like this. Okay, so you're gonna hear the contractions. You're gonna hear it. All right. Um, okay, so let's see, our, our sentence here is it is, it is, and we're gonna contract that to it's. Now we have two it's in English. This one is contracted, so it means it is. When we have this, it's a possessive pronoun, okay? Don't worry about that right now. We're gonna get into that in another lesson, don't worry. So it's, this one I think is a little bit easier, but don't forget, don't forget you guys, this S sound, it's raining, it's raining, okay? Um, also, I want you to be listening to the words that I am stressing. It's raining. It's raining. So really starting to pay attention to intonation and how um, it's, it's heard or how it's said will really help your fluency and your confidence too. Okay. Okay. We're wondering. So we've got we are. Okay. We are goes. This one I think is something you really have to practice. We're okay. It's kind of a strange one. We're we're now. Let me give you the pronunciation for that one. And I really want you guys. We're let's see. -er. Okay. What happens here is this is one vowel sound and this is another. And then the R makes it tricky. That final R sound can be kind of tricky. Okay. So we're it goes up kind of we're we're okay. So really hearing those, um, those sounds together were, a lot of people will kind of combine it even more and say were, were, and it sounds just like the past, you know, were, it sounds just like that. We're wondering about that. We were wondering about that. Okay. So we are wondering about that. Okay. Okay. Um, they are typing their papers. Now I want to point something out to you on this one as well. What happened here with type, the word is to type, okay? You'll notice what happened. So type, T-Y-P-E, with the E on the end, we drop that, we drop the E, and we've got typing, okay? That happens with, that happens with um, any, vowel, excuse me, any um, verb, gosh, I couldn't think of that word, <laughs> any verb that you guys have, so come, um, bake, okay, anything that has an E on the end, when we change it to the I-N-G form, we drop that E, so coming, okay, baking, 
Oh, I didn't even do it there. Baking. <laughs> okay, make sense? Same with drive. Driving, okay? Drive, D-R-I-V-E, goes to driving, okay? Not a huge deal. Of course, it does not impact the pronunciation if the E is there or not. But, you know, um, you know, practicing spelling in English is really important because English is not phonetic. <laughs> so, you know, um, American kids, you know, native English speaking kids spend a lot of time in school learning spelling, okay, because it's not always obvious in English. So that is one of the things um, that you can practice and just keep an eye out for is that when you have a verb that has the E at the end, you're going to take out that E and use the ING, okay? Okay, great. All right, let's look at this last one here, and then we'll look at the um, contraction for that. So they are typing their papers. This is a good sentence, actually, because we can compare these. Um, so they are, we're going to change, let's just move this over again. They are goes to there. And they are typing their papers. You guys pay attention to this too. These two words have very different meanings, but their pronunciation, I just said this one, their pronunciation is identical. They are the same. So, you know, we've got these words in English many times and they drive me crazy. They like drive everybody crazy. Here's an example. There are three pronunciations for their, or excuse me, three words with the same exact pronunciation for the word there. Ah, I know. Same with like here and here, right? <laughs> here in this place, or I hear you, the same exact pronunciation, okay? So, so just be on the lookout for that and be aware that those things happen a lot in English. I know, it makes English kind of tricky. I always tell my students that English is crazy, so I totally understand. Okay, so let's practice this pronunciation. Um, if it's the same as this, you guys probably have no problem with this. They're typing their papers, again, these two words have the same pronunciation. Okay, they're typing their papers. Hopefully you can hear that. There, there. Um, great, okay, let's see. Now we've talked about, we've talked about the formula. So how, how we create present progressive and we've looked at how many, or excuse me, now we've looked at also the um, contractions that we use for present progressive tense, okay? Let's now look, we've got a couple minutes left in this class, just a couple, and I want to practice how to make this negative, okay? And then we'll roll over onto th into Thursday's class, we'll look more at how to form negative questions, questions and WH questions in the present progressive. And we'll also talk about what, um, you know, the difference in usage, so we'll practice some of these things, okay? So don't miss out on that class. Okay, so let's, I probably should have just left those in there, but oh well. Okay, so if we're looking at the formula, we'll leave our formula in here. Um, so I am, we're gonna sneak the negative in here and we're gonna put not, okay? So it goes after the form of to be and before the base verb. Okay, and you're gonna to continue to use these contractions. You're gonna to continue to contract those two words, all right? This one I think can get a little tricky and people love to take out um, this part here because I think that part just gets a little trickier, you know? Um, but really, you know, using um, and practicing this tense and making it sound really good helps your English sound so much more fluent. Okay, um, great. Okay, so let's do I, you, we'll do this again. Let's use he this time, we, and then they. Okay. Um, my thing off 
all set up there. Okay, so I, we're gonna use am, not going to the party, okay? I am not going to the party. Let's create these um, first and then we'll look at some of the contractions. You are not um, inviting her, are you? I'm gonna just make this and we'll talk about what that does. That's a tag question. He is buying all of the food. We'll talk about this a little bit too. We are waiting. This is kind of all for more information. You know, kind of think about this in a conversation all related to this party, right? I'm not going to the party. You are not inviting her, are you? Um, he is buying all of the food. Oh, he is not buying. Let's do, sorry. We are not, okay, we are not waiting. Uh, let's change that. Sorry, I got caught up there. We are not waiting. How about this? Any longer? That's a good tense for you guys to practice. They are having um, people over. They are, gosh, why do I keep, they are not. Okay. Okay, great. So now we've got all these are negative. He is, let's change this. We are going to change that. He is not buying all of the food. Okay, he is not buying all of the food. All right, let's get some more space over here for us. All right, so what do we have here? So I'm not going to the party. You're not inviting her, are you? He's not buying all of the food. We're not waiting any longer. They're not having people over. Okay, so let's just talk through these one by one. So we're gonna contract this. Of course, if you don't wanna use contractions, it's totally fine. Again, I'm, I'm not going to the party, okay? Simple, and you know, with I am, we, we don't, so with some of these other ones, there are two different ways that you can make the contraction. With I, there's only one, okay? Um, so let's look at here, let's change, and move this down a little bit. He is not. Okay, so you are, we can do two different ways, okay? We can say you're not or you aren't. So two different ways that have um, identical meanings. Okay, you are not inviting her, are you? So this is called a tag question. We'll cover it in another um, lesson, but I wanted to introduce it here because it does, it is something that you will hear in English, okay? You will hear these like tag questions. Sometimes people will be like, right? Um, so just, it's like you're, you're asking a question and waiting for somebody to give you more information. You're not inviting her, are you? It's kind of a mean question. Like, you can kind of tell that the person who is asking the question doesn't like the other person. So there's kind of this implied meaning, okay? Okay, he is not buying all of the food. We're gonna use, here are the two, he's not or he isn't, okay? And again, the same exact meaning, you guys. Um, and if your question is, you know, how do I choose? which one I'm going to use, that is dependent on you. Whatever one you are more comfortable with, okay? We are not waiting anymore. Um, we are, okay, let's say we're not or we aren't, okay? We aren't. We're not or we aren't, aren't, okay? And again, you know, these are kind of new. So practicing the pronunciation of that. So we've got 
um, aren't, isn't, and those are, yeah, great. Aren't and isn't, okay? Those are the two new contractions for this lesson. Again, here, so you can say they're, oh gosh, okay. They're not, or they aren't. Okay, okay, you guys see those kind of smushed in there a little bit. Um, but you guys get the point. So I think, you know, practicing these contractions is a really important part of this present progressive tense. Um, and then also making sure that you are clearly pronouncing, I'm not, I'm not. So let's talk a little bit more about that in our class on Thursday. I'm really excited you guys are here. Um, this is just so exciting to have these classes with you guys. So um, if you have questions, please reach out to me and um, I will see you in our class on Thursday where we will continue. We will do the lesson two. We'll finish up this present progressive and then talk a little bit more about the usage or how we use or know when to use present tense or the present progressive. Okay. Um, great, great work today, you guys. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your day.